What's up guys? Welcome back to the Woodland Pursuit. Today we are going to be going over setting up your site. We are going to go over the first, the second, and the third axis. Now I know sometimes these different axes confuse people to what you're actually setting, but after this video you will not be confused anymore. Not only will you know what the axis is, you'll know everything you need to know to actually set them and set them correctly. All right. So let's get started and let's start breaking it down. All right, guys, so let's get into the axis. We're starting with the first axis. That would be the roll, that would be this, all right? This adjustment is your first axis. Now all sites have it. This scope definitely would, all right? To look at it from a sideways view, you would be adjusting this like this, all right? That is your first axis. Your second axis would be your bubble. See that bubble going back and forth? This is your second axis. However, it isn't just the adjustment in the bubble. Sometimes you have to level a slider bar first. So if you have a slider, you have to level that bar first. It's not like some of the other sites where there is no slider. All right, second axis on the side would look like this. Up or down. All right, guys, third axis is going to look like this. It's going to go either angled towards or away. And this is going to be micro adjustments towards or away. All right. Looking at it from the top of the scope, it would be an angle like this or like that. All right. We're going to go into this in more depth later. All right. So you'll understand a little bit better. Like and subscribe to the channel. Please do me a solid. Subscribing actually gets me really motivated to make more content to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, it's really just an ego boost. And it's really like why I like the subscribe, subscribers is because it just shows me that you guys care and, and that you know you want me to keep doing this for you. And as long as you want me to keep doing this for you, I'll keep doing it for you. All right, so understanding your first axis that is going to spin like this, okay? That is going to be the first axis. All right, guys, before we get started, I just want to let you know that the tools that I'm using today are Last Chance Archery Easy Green Bow Press and the Last Chance Archery Revolution Vice. Now, this thing has a bunch of different attachments you might see me use today. Um, I'm going to use the clamp right now because it's just very simple and very easy and quick to use. All right, so you can use whatever kind of, you know, tools you have available to get the job done and I'm sure you know they'll work just as well if you adapt them properly all right so getting started what we're going to do is the first axis so right now we're going to get the bow into position to get that to get that adjustment now this site doesn't allow me to get a first axis it's already built in and squared off on the site but I'm going to show you how to achieve it anyway if it wasn't all right so with this bow press I just loosen it up and get the bow where I need it so we're going to get it up top here I get out some leveling tools. All right, so see where that bubble is right there. It's right in the middle. And then we go up here. That bubble on the string is going to be right in the middle too. All right? So that's what we're looking for. Everything is going to be measured off the string because the string is what we care about because that's what launches our arrow. Don't use the riser like a lot of people want to. You might be tempted to, but don't. So I'm gonna stick this right here. We'll get a little bit better of a view of what's going on. All right, guys, so here's the first axis with my landslide. I have a three pin AccuStat scope on there. And you'll see right here that that bubble is level. And I put that up on that string up here. All right, oh, it's this tripod banging in everything. I put the bubble up there and you see it's nice and level. All right, so we want a bubble level there. And we want a bubble level right there. All right, I hope that's focusing. Now, if it wasn't level, how would we get it adjusted? We would take this little screw right here and loosen it up, and that would allow us to rotate this to get it square. All right, so just one screw. This is like a little clamp right there. All right, it's gonna release that round rod that connects your scope to your sight body. And that's gonna let you rotate it and that's going to take care of your first axis. The second axis is going to be a combination of things that we set, not just right here at 
the scope itself, but sometimes we have to get that slider bar, you know, sometimes it needs to be, you know, plumb to, it needs to be totally level up and down. And we're gonna set that with the bow string, not with the riser. A lot of people wanna use the bow riser, they'll clamp a level on the riser or, or place a level on the riser. Do not use the riser because the string is not always exactly, you know, in line with the riser. Sometimes, you know, from cam lean or from the top hats you have, off spacing your cams, putting them left to right, that string's going a little crooked. And that's what we wanna use as a reference because that is our true thing that we need to measure, all right? So when we get this bubble going like this, all right, sometimes a level bubble, you know, it might not be level if the slider arm's off. It's gonna come out this way and it's gonna go down this way, all right, to be dramatic. That bar has to be level first and then this needs to be adjusted and we'll see that in just a minute. So on this site right here, it's only one step to get this bubble level, you know, when you're going this way. All right, and that's gonna be this screw here and that screw here. And once the strings plumb, you just do these two right here and then you go right to the bubble and you're and you're done. It's super simple. With the landslide, however, first though, with the slider bar that you have up, uh, that goes up and down, you have to square that off first before you can go straight to the site housing. And you'll see that in just a moment. Now remember, now that we're doing second axis, all right, we are gonna be getting this bubble level this way, all right? But before we adjust the scope and the scope bubble, we need to make sure that the slider right here, right there, that that slider is absolutely square up and down. And we are not gonna do it by the riser. We are going to do it by the bowstring, all right? So let me show you how that's done on the bowstring. All right, so right here, I'm going to put my level, all right? So it's gonna be front to back and side to side square. All right, right now, it's only side to side square. So I'm gonna loosen my vise ever so slightly and get it where it needs to be. All right, right there looks good. So it takes some finessing. You'll see there now, you know, you have to trust me on this back one, it's square, that one's square. So now we move to the front here. And I'm gonna stick it wherever I can to square it off. Now this is a little bit of trial and error finding a flat spot here. There's a good spot right there. I'm just gonna tighten it down. And there we go right there. Now you notice that, if you can see it from my angle, it's already set, it's already on. My side is perfectly square, I think. It might have got knocked off a little bit, actually. Because it's definitely tweaking a little bit. So yeah, so good good time to check it. I check my levels, I micro-tune everything. Give it a little tiny tweaks. Yeah, it's actually off just a little bit. So that works out pretty good because then I can go ahead and show you how to get that back on. So. We get right there. You'll see how that's just a little bit off. Now to get that on perfectly, to get an Allen key and loosen right here. All right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna loosen the bottom one. Oh, wrong one. Loosen the bottom one ever so slightly, the top one even less, because I'm gonna to try to hint, like rotate it off the top one, pivot off the top one until I get it tight. I guess I'll loosen that a little bit, and it looks like it just popped into place there. And there it is. All right, so that's square. Now from the angle of the camera, it doesn't look the same as my angle. I really can't get the camera you know, behind it too well. You just have to trust me on that one. So since the, tight, the top's tighter than the bottom, I'm gonna start tightening that one. And then make sure it doesn't move, which it did. It totally moved. So loosen it and tweak it back out. And it moved again. 
So sometimes this is a process. This is when I wish they had the, the micro adjust. It's one thing I really liked about the UV site is it had micro adjust for this, which was really sweet. There we go. It's in place now. But see, I got it where it needed to be because I'm used to messing with these sites. So they're finicky, but I'm used to that. But they're still a pain in the butt, and the micro adjust definitely make everything better. All right, so I'll just tighten that down. Tighten this down. All right, so now that's good. So now my bubble is the second step of the second axis. So leveling this off was the first thing. All right, so now we don't need this on there anymore. I'll take it off before it hits the floor. And now I'm gonna move the camera. So be patient with me. So I'll come over here. All right, so now we just gotta get that bubble level. All right, now whatever you have to take that site up or down, you adjust that. Now with mine, it's a pain in a complete butt because my screws are buried behind this whole site assembly. And I'm gonna have to move my whole site in in order to get it right which is a complete pain in the butt. But that's what we gotta do. So my site is so accurate right now, but it's like what we have to do, so. Because I want my stuff perfect and apparently somewhere along the lines, my stuff got knocked off. This one thing that excel, they excel at making sites like for real, literally, but they kind of would be so much nicer if this stuff was a little bit more perfect. All right. So these screws for mine are on the front here and they're kind of a pain in the butt to get to. I got it loose you'll see how that moves it and I just dial it in I'm gonna snug these screws down just a little bit now they're broke loose so I can kind of adjust it and have it stay and I'm always watching the other bubbles to make sure they're not moving my back bubble is still perfectly centered and the front bubble now is perfectly centered now the trick is getting these screws tight without anything moving. We got square there, square there, and square there. All right, and then with the third axis. Now, you can do this two different ways. There's really only one absolutely correct way. Both ways work but one's crude and one's more exact. Just depends on how dialed in you want your bow. All right, because when we move this in and out like this, that's the third axis now, all right? Now, this bubble in and out, when that bowstring is straight up and down and it's plumb, when we move it in and out, this bubble shouldn't move. It should stay in between the lines. It's when we angle that bow up to shoot uphill or we shoot downhill, that that's when we're gonna notice a change in that bubble, all right? And that's why we're gonna use a plumb string to do it absolutely correct, all right? And I'm gonna show you both methods in just a little bit, all right? So stay tuned because I don't wanna talk much more about the third axis because I know I'm gonna say some things that are probably confusing. It's better to just see it being done. Let's get into that. All right, now for the third axis, I'm gonna show you the shortcut using a different attachment that's going to screw into my stabilizer mount. So hopefully everything will be squared up more like it's supposed to be. All right. And that should hopefully allow it to work somewhat. We'll see in a second, but I'm going to show you the real way that I do it after that. This site also doesn't have the third axis. It is built into the whole unit here. Um, that could be a good or a bad thing depending on, you know, your setup. But since this is my daughter's bow, 
it's actually a good thing because we don't need to be that advanced with her bow. So to achieve that perfect angle, everything's locked in right here and there's a pivot on this Revolution Vice adapter, the stabilizer adapter. All right, so here we go. We're gonna tip it. I'm gonna loosen right here and I'm gonna go down. All right, and then I'm gonna tighten it. And it's touching just to the side. I have to move the camera because I can't get back there to see. All right, it's pretty straight. So let's go down and see if it moves to the other side. And it did, it moved to the other side. So it is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit off. Now on my bow to fix this, it's this screw here and this screw here. That'll give me the tilt like this that I need. Remember, I need to go out just a little bit. Let's make that adjustment. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to put on this third axis tool and we are gonna follow that pin along the line that I got hanging from my ceiling. And that bubble in our scope should stay the same regardless of the position of the string we're on, up high or down low or in the middle. All right, here's the string I got hanging. All right, we're gonna like focus on that. We're gonna start in the middle and we're going to even that pin up on it, and then we're going to go up high. And it should, the bubble should stay right. And then if so, when we go down low, it'll stay right also. All right, here we go. Let's try it out. So you see this pin right here. All right, this bottom pin and that top pin should both be on the rope. That helps plumb up your bow while you're going through the movements. All right. So this also takes care of any kind of, of torque or flex or inconsistencies in your bow to make sure everything's dialed right. All right. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take my glasses off first. All right. And I took the field point off just to be safe. I'm gonna start off right in the middle. Bubble and my pin looks good. Go down. Bubble on the pin's good. Go up. Bubble on my pin's good. Ugh. So that makes sure everything is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, if it's not perfect, the bubble's gonna go to one side, and then when you go down low, it's gonna go to the other, or it's gonna go from the other side. When you go up, it's gonna go to the other. It's gonna flip-flop. It's not gonna always be off in the same direction, high and low. It's gonna kind of go diagonal, you know, your bubble. As you, if it's off the side, your bubble, and when you come down to level and it gets level again, and you go down, it should go to the other side. All right, so it's gonna make like a diagonal pattern. Your bubbles can go from one side to the other or vice versa. All right. And then you know that you just need to make them micro adjustments to fix it. All right, guys. So I think that pretty much covers it. So that's using my landslide as an example. Also, I used my daughter's site as an example, but pretty much all sites are the same thing. Um, they just some have different features than others. Some may be a little easier to adjust. Some might be a little harder to adjust. And some might not have the adjustment altogether. So you really just need to know your first accent, second axis, and your third axis. Know what they do and then move on from there to how to get that precise adjustment. Now, if you can't figure this out, if this video wasn't comprehensive enough to where I just explained it all really great and you need more help, you can hit me up and I will get back to you personally and I will try to help you out the best I can. Bear in mind, I'm not... You know, I don't work at a bow shop. I'm just an uh, archery enthusiast that kind of knows what I'm doing. 
um, for the most part. So if you need any help, let me know and I'll help you out. But if you don't know, ask you know somebody at your local archery shop to help you out, and maybe you'll have a great shop that not will not only will they just take your bow in and charge you to get it done, maybe they'll also take you aside and show you what are they doing and how are they doing it, and maybe. You know, you can kind of tinker yourself because there's nothing worse than being at the range and something being off and you can't take care of it. But if you can take care of it, that's awesome. It's empowering and it just makes us feel better as archers because archers tend to want to take care of it all from field to table with the deer. And it's just a great thing. So like and subscribe to the channel. Please do me a solid. Subscribing actually gets me really motivated to make more content to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, it's really just an ego boost. And it's really like why I like the subscribe subscribers is because it just shows me that you guys care and, and that, you know, you want me to keep doing this for you. And as long as you want me to keep doing this for you, I'll keep doing it for you. All right, guys, like always get outside, get some arrows in the air. Good luck on your woodland pursuit.